In this video, I'm going to show you how I summited La Malinche, 14,640 feet in Mexico on New Year's Day. So I got a campsite at the uh, IMSS Resort, which is about at 10,000 feet. I think the thing to keep in mind with this is that most of my elevations, based on my watch, are off by about 1,000. They're about 1,000 too low. Uh, I ended up... Uh, getting there on New Year's Eve and then uh, started hiking at about New Year's Day at about uh, 3 a.m. And there was nobody hiking that early, but there would be hundreds of people on the mountain by the time I was finished. Okay, it's 2.50 a.m. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to take seven and a half hours to get up if all goes well. I'm not expecting it to go all go well because I was at 6,000 feet yesterday. Uh, for many hours, uh, almost the whole day, uh, but I only got to 9,000 feet about 2, 000, at 2 p.m., uh, and I don't think I've had enough time to acclimate, so I feel good, though. I don't have a headache, so I don't have anything, symptoms or anything. I just think it's, it's a little rushed. I think the other thing is that uh, from the approach, it looked really technically difficult. Uh, now, I saw tons of people who were, um, had no gear whatsoever, had no packs, had tennis shoes, jeans, no water coming down the mountain. I didn't talk to them because I don't speak Spanish. Uh, this has a reputation of uh, being a kids and families hike. Uh, but looking at the top of the mountain, it doesn't look like a kids and family hike. I think you should have some gear. Um, I don't need the helmet at the moment. I don't think I'll need it for a while, but uh, I'll wear it now because it's kind of cold. Okay, it's uh, 6 uh, 45, something like that. Uh, we're just over 12,000 uh, feet. Uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, I haven't seen anybody going up. So nobody's passed me. I've seen several people going down in the middle of the night. Uh, maybe they wanted to spend New Year's Eve on the summit. Uh, and then, you know, I mean, as long as you get down the tree line, I guess that's okay because the the trail seemed pretty good to me. Uh, I took the road uh, most of the way. The road got really bad uh, after the cell phone tower at uh, 1,600 feet uh, and then got really steep. Uh, and, you know, I would never, you know, they, they, they close off for a reason because uh, people get their cars stuck up there. Um, it's pretty windy now. Uh, behind me, you can see the fall. I think that's a false summit, but I think I was able to see the true summit a little bit lower down, but I didn't uh, get out my camera. Uh, I probably got to switch to warmer gloves because it's, uh, it's very windy. The, the, the uh, ground is hard packed. Um, so I'm hoping to to get to the summit before 11. I think I'm on track for that. Uh, I think you go much longer than that than you risk going down in the dark, although I do think it's possible to do given if you, especially if you're taking the road versus the trail. But of course, I don't ever like to, <laughs> I don't ever like to descend it dark and I haven't done it yet and I don't plan to do it today. Okay, so I need to look at the pictures. I originally thought the far one by the sun, the far peak, uh, if you look like right into the sun, uh, was the uh, the summit. But now I'm not so sure. 
I'm thinking that maybe I am ascending this ridge and that that kind of square thing up there has just like one false peak, but uh, the furthest one is the, the true summit. It's my guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, definitely need the ice axe here. It's such mixed ground. Um, I don't know if crampons are the way to go, uh, but there may be some sections where you definitely want crampons. Uh, you know, the ice is holding together the uh, the the dirt, so it, it it is solid, but there are some slippery bits. Uh, so nice to have a cr ice axe. Okay, so I'm thinking that you, what's up there is 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 the summit. Um, but I'm just gonna follow the path uh, or the steps that I can see in the snow uh, or the dirt. Uh, I saw a party of three when I was uh, at like 1,200 feet, when I was like at 1,200, 400 feet. And now I see a, a single woman, uh, I thought, but maybe there's two now. I see one in brown and one in white. So maybe two of the three or all three. I had, I don't know. I can see them, they're on kind of a different ridge. I think this is the better line because we're gonna make the ridge. And now I think I see a guy descending. Uh, yeah, and he's taking a different line. So it is a bit of a crazy quilt. I can see how uh, you kind of have to choose the steps that you walk in. Um, my feet got cold, so I put on a second wool sock. But I would think, you know, I kind of wanted to buy a double boot uh, before I left, and I think that would have been good. So in Orizaba, I might rent a double boot uh, because these are my summer boots, the Trango Tex. Uh, but definitely you want a mountaineering boot, uh, preferably the one that is easy to slip on the crampons. Although I've seen so many people summon Orizaba in, in like uh, waterproof hiking boots, which are just really not good for cramponing. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna continue on and uh, maybe I'll talk to the guy that went down, although he probably doesn't speak English. Uh, you know that when I left the camp, there was like nobody, there's like nobody um, there were no cars. All the cars that were there before were people that were leaving, not staying overnight. Uh, it seems like everybody does this during the day, not during the night. But I think if you want to have success, that you need to have an alpine start unless you're the fastest. Uh, but uh, I kind of regret I didn't start an hour earlier. It would have been better. Um, I started at, I got up at two and left at three. And, you know, I think uh, a better start would have been one or even midnight. But I wanted to, it's hard to say because you want to emerge from the, the trees uh, in the daylight. And that's that's pretty much what I did. So going an hour early meant it would be kind of dark going up this more technical slope, which is probably not great. So behind me are uh, Itza and Papo. So this is that's the south face. Uh, I was on the north face, right? So I made the ridge, and you can see there's this boulder here. I still have quite a bit of ways to go. I got I twelve thousand eight hundred feet, so at least um, sixteen hundred feet more. More than that, seventeen hundred feet. Uh, Let's see, it's it's about 8:40 in the morning. Uh, there's a bit of fog rolling in over the mountain uh, and clouds. It was clear before. Hopefully, it clears up as we get closer. Uh, otherwise, if there's weather, we'll have to turn around. Uh, but we did make the ridge. Uh, definitely, ice axe work here. Might put on the crampons, but it's so mixed right here. Depends on how slippery it is. Okay. 
Okay, you can see this ridge here. I'm at 13,000 feet. This is a very noticeable feature, especially if you make the summit ridge, but you probably can see it before it. Um, it's a kind of precarious ridge. Uh, getting a lot of use for the ice axe. Uh, I see a party going down, somewhat noisy. Um, so maybe they summited really early in the morning. I don't know. But they don't seem, they should be, we should run into them pretty soon. Oh man, that was so tough. Uh, so this, the 300 feet or 200 feet from uh, that rock outcropping where you're no longer on the ridge, uh, it was so tough, especially with a pack, it would have been, well, it's easier with an ice axe and a really light pack, but I've got two liters of water, three liters of water for sure left over. Uh, it was too much for my arms. Uh, so I had to, uh, like the, the people who passed me on the way down uh, after they'd summited, said, you need the crampons because the crampons <laughs> allow you to have the four points of contact and you don't have to pull yourself up by your arms. Your arms just don't have that much stamina. So, uh, pitifully, we're only like three, uh, 13, four. Oh, and you can hear in the background some dogs here. Here's the dogs. They've been following me. They hung out with me while I put on my crampons. I try to shoo them away, but they don't listen. <laughs> so I think, you know, you'll probably see the, these dogs or other dogs at the summit just like you'll see lots of wild dogs uh at the resort the imss campground or or if you're gonna rough camp right at the uh gate okay so i'm starting to think my altimeter may be off oh great he's setting off fireworks uh i think my altimeter is off by a hundred a thousand feet because that I don't think that's a thousand feet. Uh, so uh, it says we're at thirteen thousand four hundred. So maybe the barometric pressure calibration is bad. I'll have to try that down where I know the ele elevation. <sighs> Otherwise, they're on a false summit. But I suspect no. There's some people over there. So maybe there is a further summit. Okay, anyways, we're getting closer and it's going much smoother with the uh, crampons on. Okay, so like a sucker, I climbed up the false summit. It's actually really steep on the false summit. Uh, so uh, you have to climb back down and around the false summit. And I don't think it's that technically difficult. But once you get up the false summit, there's no easy way down in the direction you want to go. You got to go backtrack. So, yeah, don't do the stupid Hi. stuff I did. <laughs> so it's 10.51. Uh, I didn't reach my uh, goal. I'm on the false summit, so... Uh, it's probably going to take, I don't know, another half hour to get to the real summit. Okay, so uh, there's the real summit. There's the false summit. I think there might be a crack that you can walk around it. Uh, I walked like 150 feet down to the uh, south side, which is a bit of a scree slope. I did follow somebody's footprints, which petered out. Uh, so I don't think that's the most common way. And I didn't wait for the people on the summit to come down because they were taking a long time. So here we go. There's the real summit behind me, false summit. And I climbed around it. And now it's just a walk up, hopefully.
Okay, I think uh, the one I was just on was the highest. I don't see any on the other ones. Uh, there's a further peak that looks lower. That one, maybe. But I don't see anybody on it. Oh, now there's people going up it. Damn it. This is another Buddha. Okay. See, now there's people going up that one, so I don't know. I'm not quite sure which one is the summit, and I'm trying to figure it out, and nobody knows. Okay, uh, I'll check this when I get home, but I'm pretty sure that the first summit on this ridge here is the true summit. The other one was about 40 feet shorter. It just had a marker, like the Salas family put a marker on it. So they put a big two by four to make it higher. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what the markings are here, but I think this is it. I'm gonna turn around, uh, I'm way past um, my time and I think my altimeter is off by 1100 feet uh, which is unfortunate um, but it says that I need to get down to 9300 feet before I can go to bed so uh, better get on it and see what time it is it's 12.05 Mama Lynche. Oh man, this is awful. It's like a 45 degree slope on this trail. Down. Uh, you know, uh, I took the road on the way up and I would like to intersect with the road, but I think I missed a turn on the road and I thought it crossed like 10 times and I still am on this trail. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. <sighs>